Hello everybody and welcome to part two of my little two-part music tutorial. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at audio groups and volume management, so how to manage uh, the volume of a group of sounds, um, so like your music separate from your sound effects and so on. It's quite a useful thing to be able to do. So what are audio groups? Um, audio groups are something you can access through the tools menu. Uh, if you go to audio groups it'll bring up and uh, by default in your project, if you have a bunch of sounds, this group will probably be full of stuff. It's audio group underscore default. Um, that group gets loaded into memory automatically whenever you run your game. Um, that's why you're able to just put a sound into your game and then just play it with audio play sound. Um, normally though, if you have your sound in a specific audio group, so I have two, I've named them AG Music and uh, AG SFX for sound effects. Um, if you have a specific audio group for specific sounds, you have to load them in manually, okay? That's cool because it allows you to control exactly what's in memory at any given time, so you don't just have every sound that you have in your game loaded into memory at once. Because, you know, sounds can actually get pretty beefy in file size, so um, it's worth keeping control over what's loaded when. But that's not the only advantage to audio groups, and the main thing that we're going to be looking at today is that what you can do is you can actually manipulate the gain uh, that's the volume of an entire audio group. So you can uh, set the volume of like all of your sound effects and all of your music and whatever are the various categories of sounds that you have. Okay, that's really useful. You know most commercial games give you the option to change uh, the volume of say your music and your dialogue and your sound effects and this is a way that you can do that. So I've assigned my various sounds here, my four music tracks, into this audio group just via this audio group's menu, which you can do just by clicking add resource and pick one to add, um, and it'll put it in, and the same for my sound effects, but you can also add them from the sound editor itself, so if I go to any given one of these, so M Mountain for example, um, uh, this music track you could just uh, see audio group at the bottom, it's just got a drop down menu, you can just select which audio group you want to put it in. To actually create a new audio group though you have to use this, this menu up here, okay? So as I said, when you put stuff in specific audio groups other than uh, your audio group underscore default, um, you have to you have to load those in manually before you're able to actually play those sound effects. You can do other things with them, like you can set a gain and stuff like that, but you can't play a sound effect unless it, or a music track unless it's actually loaded into memory. So how on earth do we do that? Well, if I go to my own music object that I've got set up, just kind of handling everything in this part. In the create event, I just simply use this line here, audio underscore group underscore load, and then the name of the audio group. You see audio group shows up red, Game Maker recognizes it as a thing. Um, but that doesn't happen instantly, so you can't just do this and then instantly run like audio sound play underneath, okay? That won't work. Or audio play sound, I think it is. <laughs> um, because uh, you don't know when this is actually going to finish or how long it's going to finish and it happens asynchronously that means just like not at the same time as the rest of your game okay um, so how do we know when this is finished well when uh, an audio group finishes loading it triggers an event okay it triggers one of these um, and it's called the async save load event so asynchronous uh, save load this one here okay and you see I've got that added here with the description sounds loaded and I check to see because I, I, when this event's triggered I don't know if it's because of this audio group loading or this audio group loading or maybe something else using that async event right so I have to check to see still if the audio group itself is loaded when this event got triggered and if it is do whatever I want to do so if my music is loaded I actually start playing um, a track based on music playing I've got a little variable system and some arrays set up to sort of control the four tracks and crossfade between them and I set control to be true, which is a variable I use to control whether or not I change. Uh, I can ch I can change volume. And we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, for sound effects, I just set a variable so that I know uh, I can check later whenever I want to play sound effects to make sure that they're actually loaded in memory before trying to. Okay, simple as that. So for setting this up, I actually have a volume slider. Um, I have a couple of these that I, that's literally just got my face on them, and I, I just use them to drag, uh, drag a button around on a bar. How I do all that stuff and like dragging it back and forth isn't too important to this video. Um, if you're one of my Patreon supporters, you'll get the source code for this, so you'll be able to kind of look at that if it's interesting to you. But I haven't coded that super well or specifically for this tutorial. Um, the main thing that's important is here. Okay. Um, so based on my, the exposition of this this handle on a bar, which you'll see in a minute, it's just like a little button on a bar that I drag back and forth to change volume. 
um, with O music, uh, I set music volume, a specific variable for how loud I want uh, any music playing to be, to be a thing based on the exposition of this. So, okay, so that's just setting a variable called music volume, and then I use that variable to do audio group set gain. Okay, and this works exactly like uh, the audio sound get set gain or um, audio sound gain rather, in that you can set a specific volume and also set it over a specific point in time uh, or a specific a specific amount of time. Sorry, so you can fade it if you really wanted to. But um, here I'm just sending it immediately. Um, to whatever volume it needs to be, okay? Um, so let's see how that actually works, shall we? So if I run the game, uh, you can hear music already playing. And now if I drag my face down here, that's gone really quiet, I don't know if you'll even be able to hear it in the video still now, but you can see down here, look where I could, I'm could. i showing the gain of all of these different sound effects. Um, you can see all of the music ones that are in uh, the audio group AG Music have all had their gain changed to 0 0.10, okay? And I've got a sound effects one here because I can play random sound effects. Those are all just sounds from random Ludendari games, uh, but I can also change that. I don't know if you can even still hear those. But you get the idea, right? Okay. Um, so what I can also do in this game is I can crossfade between my tracks. So if I press space, um, you can see the game's changing there. And you'll notice I turn everything grey while I'm doing that because um, an important thing to note is that uh, when I'm changing the gain of the audio group, that's not a very I'm not changing a variable specific to the audio group. I'm actually just changing the gain of every sound that's inside it. Okay, so that will overwrite. Let me turn this down. So that will overwrite. Um, any game changes that you've done um, other than that, okay? So if uh, you've, you've faded a sound out to zero or whatever um, and then you set it using music volume to 0 0.2 or whatever, that's going to set everything. So what you've got to do is be careful to make sure you stop playing sounds when you're crossfading between them, okay? So you'll notice when I crossfade, if I turn this back up, um, watch what happens. So I'm on M Puzzle and I want to go to M Mountain. So that might have been difficult to spot, I don't know. But what I did is essentially uh, I set my gains to whatever they should have been. So M Puzzle was the one that was playing. Um, so I told that to fade towards zero and I told M Mountain to fade, uh, to, to set itself to zero and then start playing and fade itself to the given volume, okay? Because otherwise its gain was already at whatever volume, right? They were all at that. Um, and then when I, when I was finished with that, um, uh, I give control back to the player because then they'll all be at the, the correct gain again, okay? When when M Puzzle hits zero, I stop it playing anymore, okay? Um, so you can't do that thing that I showed in the, the previous um, tutorial where uh, you play two music tracks at once and just use their gain to decide kind of whether or not they're playing or not, okay? If you're going to set volume using audio groups, um, then you want to make sure that uh, you're really only playing the one track at a time. If you need uh, tracks to still be in sync and you wanted to accomplish that, there's a thing called audio sync groups that will allow you to do that. I may or may not explore that in another tutorial at a later date, uh, but that allows you to have multiple tracks that play and stay in sync all the time, but you can like pause and stop and move between them and so on, so you can still use this sort of system. Okay? So just in case you didn't understand any of what I just said about uh, controlling the, the, the gain and, and uh, making it so you can't change the volume while you're fading between tracks, because if, if I was able to do that while in the middle of fading track, that would interrupt everything, so that's why I lock it out. And you'd want to avoid the player ever being able to do that, so if you're in the middle of a crossfade or something like that, you probably don't want the player to be able to pause the game, go to the menu and change music volume, because that'll screw things up. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a thing to bear in mind, but let's just take a look at how exactly that works. So if I go to music now and go to, um, I think, the step event, yeah. So down here where I just have keyboard check, press space, um, it's when you press the space bar to do a crossfade, here's what I do. So I set it so you can't, I set control to false and that's what allows me to actually change the volume with the sliders. Um, so if that's not true then I can't do any, uh, any volume changing. 
um, I, I find the, the track that I want to move to, um, then I set that track playing, I set its gain to be zero. In theory I should probably do that the other way around, but it happens so instantaneously, you're, you're never going to actually hear a bit of it and then and then have it fade to zero, I don't think, right? Um, uh, then I tell it to fade from zero to the target music volume, whatever our current music volume is, and then I tell music playing our current me playing track to fade towards zero. Okay, and then down here, if a fade's complete, uh, in other words, the music playing has faded all the way to zero, and uh, and we don't currently have control, so that means we must be doing a crossfade. Uh, stop the current sound from playing. Um, even though it's playing at gain zero, we need to stop it from playing so that we can set its gain back and not have them both be playing at once. So we need to properly stop it playing. Music playing, uh, change, the, change the track that we're actually playing, um, in the variable anyway, because it's already actually playing. Audio set group gain, and then set, uh, set the volume of the audio group back to uh, whatever the music volume should be, and then re return control to the player, okay? That's more or less how it works, pretty straightforward, and it's a really simple way of getting going with a, um, a volume control system, which could otherwise be quite complicated. Um, so it's a good way to use audio group um, audio groups, and it's generally good practice to use audio groups anyway, just to control what's in your memory at any given time. Hope that was useful. Uh, this demo and all its code in it, like I've only really gone through the relevant stuff, but um, all the stuff like the, the the actual sliders and that that kind of process and how you control that kind of thing, I might cover that stuff in another like UI based tutorial. But that's a completely different topic. But the source code is available for my five dollar plus Patreon supporters. So if you're one of those people, you can go check that out on my Patreon page. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next week, probably on a part of the platformer series. All right, see you guys then. A huge thanks as always to my Patreon supporters, that's the people who uh, keep me going, keep me doing all of this good stuff. Uh, special shout-outs in particular to Dan in a Mule, Giles Montgomery, Harold Guidry, Nathaniel Walsh, Lewis R. Pereira, Nick Slavish, Stephen Hagen, Jason McMillan, Owen Morgan, Bowser the Dog, and John Grimshaw. Thank you very much, all of you, for your continued support, and I'll catch you guys next week.